What's going on, buddy? Soli Ecker here, the Arm Fisherman, and uh, this is uh, something I actually kind of believe in. I, I, I don't say defund the police, but I definitely say defund the ATF. The channel is called The Philosopher, and um, she does a lot of Second Amendment oriented. Go to her channel. Links will be in the description below. Um, she does a really great job of explaining and and showing people that, yes, I do believe the ATF should be defunded. They don't do us any good. It only makes it harder for us to make sure that we lawfully own our firearms. So uh, let's get into this video. Go to The Philosopher. Um, subscribe to their channel. And uh, let them know Soli Ecker sent you. So I'm going to get out of here. Hit that like, share, and that subscribe. Soli Ecker. Deuces. Bureau of Alcohol, Tobacco, Firearms, and Explosives, known in short as the ATF, is a federal law enforcement organization charged with investigating federal offenses as relates to firearms, explosives, alcohol, and tobacco. They have over 5,000 employees and an annual budget well over $1 billion. While ATF agents claim that they are helping to stop violent crime, the reality is that they are mostly engaged in threatening people who have not acted violently toward others. Let's take a look at three key reasons why the ATF should be abolished. Number three, ATF agents act unethically to carry out their aims. The ATF has been involved in numerous scandals demonstrating that those working there are more interested in controlling others than promoting peace. This comes in the form of attacking innocent families over victimless gun laws, murdering families who won't comply with their orders, and running guns to gang members. For example, one of the most famous incidents is the Waco Siege of 1993, where ATF agents invaded a religious compound known as the Branch Davidians on a search warrant for weapons, weapons that the ATF agents themselves used in the siege. The siege lasted 51 days, and the assault by the ATF caused a fire which killed 76 people, including 20 children and two pregnant women. Before Waco, another siege had taken place in 1992 called the Ruby Ridge Siege, where ATF agents vengefully came after a man named Randy Weaver because he refused to be an informant for the ATF. Because Weaver refused to do the ATF's bidding, they made up false claims that he was involved in a bank robbery and then tried to pin him on firearms charges. When Weaver didn't show up in court on a warrant, federal agents, led by the FBI, surrounded his property. In a shootout, the federal agents shot and killed Weaver's 14-year-old son, Sammy, the Weaver's family dog, Stryker, and Weaver's wife as she was holding her 10-month-old baby in her arms. Weaver was arrested but ultimately acquitted of all charges, except missing his original court date due to the federal agent's manipulations and violence. In another scandal, known as Operation Fast and Furious, the ATF purposefully let some 2,000 guns flow to known Mexican mafias in a supposed attempt to track cartel leaders. The majority of those guns, passed to known criminals between 2006 and 2011, didn't get recovered, and none of the high-level cartel figures sought were arrested from the gun-walking operations. The Mexican government later reported that some of the guns were found at 170 different crime scenes. As you can see, the ATF has a history of committing the harms they say they are supposedly stopping. Number two, the ATF makes up arbitrary rules. The ATF is famous for conjuring up arbitrary rules in its classifications that not only are irrational, but also make it difficult for gun owners to know whether or not one slight modification may turn them into a federal felon. To make this point, let's look at just one scenario to see the confusing absurdity. This is a Glock 17. By its design, it is classified as a pistol because the ATF says that if a firearm is designed with a short stock meant to be gripped by one hand and at an angle to and extending below the line of the bore and has a chamber permanently aligned with the bore, it's a pistol. But if you decide to attach a shoulder stock, now it's magically not a pistol, even though it literally has all the same parts and functions in the frame. So what does the ATF call it? A short barrel rifle. Why? Because now that your pistol has an attached part meant to rest on your shoulder, the ATF magically transforms your gun into a short barrel rifle for having a barrel length shorter than 16 inches. This classification requires that you submit an application with fingerprints and a photo and pay a $200 tax stamp to legally own it. If rear adjustment isn't your thing, 
What happens when you try to put on a vertical foregrip instead for stability? You probably guessed it, it's no longer a pistol again. This time, having a vertical foregrip converts the pistol to what's called in any other weapon under the National Firearms Act. The ATF has held that by installing a vertical foregrip on a handgun, the handgun is no longer designed to be held and fired by the use of a single hand. Thus, adding it cannot be legally done without approval via an ATF Form 1 application. So, what is the consequence of not having the proper paperwork before making a short barrel rifle or in any other weapon? Possibly a 10-year prison sentence and a $10,000 fine. But wait, if instead of attaching a shoulder stock, you attach a stabilizing brace, that's technically okay, as the ATF states that such is meant to still be fired from one hand. You may be wondering, what happens if you shoulder the stabilizing brace? Does that automatically make you a felon? Well, as of 2020, the ATF has stated that shouldering on occasion does not automatically convert a braced pistol to an SBR. But can you rely on that interpretation for long? As we will see in reason number one to abolish the ATF, not so much. Number one, the ATF can readily change rules at will. Even if you spend a considerable amount of time trying to comply, your property rights are not secure, as was proven in the ATF bump stock ban. The ATF reclassified bump stocks as machine guns on December 18th, 2018. All those who relied on the ATF's prior ruling that bump stocks were legal were told to immediately dispose of their bump stocks. The bump stocks could not be made legal otherwise through special paperwork thanks to the misleadingly titled Firearms Owners Protection Act, which limits private machine gun ownership to those devices made before 1986. Essentially, this meant that anyone with any bump stock, private owner and dealer alike, suffered a loss of their inventory. Worse, a federal claims court denied a half million dollar lawsuit seeking reimbursement for a company's bump stock inventory. The court said that because the rule was in the interest of public safety, no compensation was needed under the Fifth Amendment takings clause. The examples I mentioned here are just the tip of the iceberg. There are many more bizarre rulings and violent raids carried out by the ATF than I could account for in a short video. It's important to realize that ATF is essentially a rogue agency that uses violence to get people to comply with arbitrary, fluctuating rules that turn peaceful people into felons at the flick of a pen. We must work together to abolish the ATF and repeal the National Firearms Act so that the right to bear arms can be restored and gun owners can be freed from malicious persecution.